Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about how I made this balloon effect using Blender. It is very easy, so let's begin it with the VFX tab. So here we go, we're going to open up our footage. I'll put the link to the same footage in the description down below. I'm going to go ahead to the directory where I have the footage. I downloaded this footage from pexels.com. It is really good. Click open the clip and it will be opened. So first of all, we're going to do some render settings. So go into render settings under color management, change the view transform to standard. So we get the default colors. As you can see, I'm going to go into output and I'm going to change the frame rate to 29.97, which is actually the footage frame rate. So I'm going to set it and also the resolution. They must match because it will make problem in the future. So we're going to match them so they don't like make problem for me. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to click prefetch to load the video into the RAM and after that the video will be played very smoothly and again, we're going to left everything by default because I'm not going to change anything. It's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and click detect features and it will add trackers by default. So I'm going to expand this window. I'm going to go ahead and make the threshold level down to something like uh, zero, like the threshold level must be zero. So we get enough trackers in the scene. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click track forward and it will try tracking it. Okay, so again, we're going to go into detect features and I'm going to go ahead and click it. And I'm going to track backward. So we have, we have enough data. And again, I'm going to go ahead to the middle of the video. I'm going to click detect features and I'm going to track backward. Something like that. And I'm going to go ahead to the same frame and I'm going to track forward. So we can have the tracking for both the sides. Okay, so I'm going to expand the curve editor, you can say. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the spikes because they're actually making problems. They are really a huge problem for you. So you got to select them one by one and hit X. Or you can also click delete to delete all of these because they're making problem for us. And yeah, just go ahead and do it. Sometime you may have more of them. So you can just go ahead and delete them. It can fix half the problem for you okay i'm gonna uh, just make it smaller i'm gonna go ahead into solve and i'm gonna lift everything by default and i'm gonna turn on focal length optical center and distortion because we don't know the camera parameters and i'm gonna click solve camera motion and it will try solving the motion so let's wait for this to happen okay so it's done as you can see it's error of 0 0.42 but it's showing it that some data is not really built so I'm going to go ahead under cleanup. I'm going to click clean tracks and I'm going to make the reprojection error to something like uh, 0 0.61. And I'm going to go ahead and click X and delete. And I'm going to go ahead and solve camera motion and I will try fixing the problem. Okay, the area is smaller, but it, as you can see, it says some data is unable to reconstruct. I'm going to go ahead and click filter track and I'm going to click delete and I'm going to go solve camera motion. Uh, anything lower than one is good. As you can see, we got 0 0.24, which is really good. And I'm going to go ahead and click set up tracking scene. And as you can see, it's created a cube and a plan for you. Okay, so first of all, we've got to set up the floor. So I'm going to go ahead and select three trackers from the ground. I'm going to select those. I'm not sure if they're not working, so I'm going to change them later on. But for now, I'm going to set them up. Okay, so I'm going to set, select those two and I'm going to click set scale. I'm going to increase the distance between them because they're very far from one another. It's like a drone shot, so it, it's actually in meters. And I'm going to go ahead and click set scale. And uh, okay, so I think this, the rotation is, orientation is not good. So I'm going to go ahead and select three trackers and I'm going to click floor. I will try selecting them because uh, I don't know which one works perfectly. But I'm going to go ahead and select the camera. I'm going to make the clips ending to 10,000 meters so we can see what is going on. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and select other three trackers. I'm just trying to find a good spot uh, for best orientation i'm gonna go ahead and click set scale i think that is uh, fine i'm gonna select uh these uh, set x axis so we can set it up i think that one yeah i'm just trying to orientate the scene perfectly so it's not a huge deal okay so i'm gonna go ahead and select them one by one if it's not aligning i'm gonna go ahead and do it again and again until it aligns with the view I'm going to go ahead and click plus and I'm going to go into layout. I'm going to go into camera view. So as you can see, it's not perfectly aligning. It's like uh, it's like it's like not really aligning with the ground. So I'm going to go ahead under camera, under background. I'm going to increase the opacity so I can see the footage perfectly. I'm going to click R and rotate the camera maybe by hitting R and then uh, Z. 
it's actually in local orientation i'm gonna go ahead into motion tracking i'm gonna go ahead and click set uh, origin for these uh, trackers so we can say okay so i'm just trying to find a best tracker for best stuff like origin floor x-axis y-axis and if you still don't get me i have already made a basic video for motion tracking in blender i will put the link in the description so you can also check it out i'm just trying to find a good origin for my video i think that is the f good one and if i just zoom it in let me just check it up i'm gonna go ahead and scale it up so i can see what is going on uh i think it's a bit sliding I don't know uh, if I'm wrong, but I'm going to go ahead and set the uh, origin to 3D cursor there so I can rotate around the uh, 3D cursor. I'm going to rotate it on Y axis like that so it's perfectly aligned. I'm going to set it to global and I'm going to rotate it in on Z axis. If you don't understand what I'm saying, then you can check out my previous video, which is really good. Okay, so as you can see, it's sliding. It's not working as we wish it to be. So what we can do, we can fix the problem. Like it's not perfectly done. We can change the orientation. We can change different stuff if you want. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move it to that side. I just want to see if it's sliding really. And I think it is sliding like crazy. I don't know why it's that, but I'm going to go ahead into motion tracking. And I'm going to go ahead and find a spot where I have trackers on the river. So I'm going to go ahead and select those three trackers. I'm going to click floor. I think it's not perfectly aligning again. So I'm going to go ahead and select another one. Maybe hit control Z, control Z. I'm going to go ahead and uh, select another three. I'm just trying to find a best area for the floor. I'm going to click floor. I think it's not perfectly aligning again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select those three trackers. I'm going to click floor. It's actually good. And I think I'm going to go ahead and select. Oh, shit. It's not perfectly aligning. Okay. So I'm just trying to find a best location for this one. Okay. So I think if I select those three and click floor, I think that's fine. I think that's working. I'm going to go ahead into layout. I know the... Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select one of the tracker set origin and I'm going to go ahead into let me just click set origin again. Yeah, I think that was not a good one. I think I need to select another one with uh, that I want. I think this one set origin. I think that's fine. I'm going to go ahead into layout. I can now select the camera and click R to rotate it on the Z axis. And I'm going to go ahead and just play it. As you can see now, it's sticking there and this is what we wanted. I didn't need any magic. I just changed the floor to be on somewhere else. So it's perfectly aligned with what we want. I hope you got it. If you don't understand, you can check out the video that I'm giving you in the, in the description. And I will also give you the link. Okay. I'm going to change it to individual origin and I'm going to scale it up. I'm going to click Shift A and I'm going to add a monkey. A Suzanne head that we call it and I'm gonna go to align it with the floor it's not needed to be down there or in the ear it just need to be perfectly aligned with the grid and so it will perfectly stick there and I'm gonna go ahead and if I play it uh, as you can see we got something like that and uh, okay so I'm gonna go ahead and expand the window and let me just check it out what we get here and uh, if I just go ahead and turn on the ground and light I can select the ground I'm gonna go we got a background collection I'm gonna select it and delete we got the layers I'm gonna go into background layer and click the cross so we just left with the foreground and this is what we wanted I don't want problem so I'm gonna delete them okay so I'm gonna go ahead and select the ground and I'm gonna scale it up like that I'm gonna play the video and as you can see it's perfectly staying there and this is what we wanted Okay, so I'm going to go ahead into physics. Uh, I'm going to add a collision into the ground object. I'm going to select the source in head. And what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to modifier, add a subdivision modifier under generate subdivision surface. I'm going to set the division to two and I'm going to go ahead and add another modifier or you can say physics, which is actually cloth physics. So I'm going to go ahead and to the first frame. And if I play it, as you can see now it's falling into the ground and, and now we gotta change some settings like uh, the collision and other stuff because it's not acting the way we want. 
So what I'm going to do, uh, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the preset to denim, uh, maybe leather, I think. Denim is a good, okay. And under uh, collision, uh, I'm going to go ahead, collision, click self collision, so it collide with itself, it makes some real stuff. I'm going to go ahead and hit control S and save the file and name it the way I want. And now if I play the video, as you can see, it's playing very slowly, but it will play, uh, it will, it will be done. Okay. So just be patient with it. I don't want to bake it because I just want to, I just want the ship that, uh, the sozin to be down there. Okay. So I'm just trying to make this thing happen and I will try to get this thing down. Okay. So I think that's fine. So first of all, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to share this mode. I'm going to go ahead into maybe I can say into modifiers and I can first apply the subdivision, then the cloth modifier. So it have the default shape of the cloth down there. So after that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this thing uh, filling up with air automatically. You can say uh, so it's very easy and you can just do it right away. I'm just trying to make it so I'm gonna go ahead and click shift a I'm gonna I'm gonna add a mesh it is going to be a cube I'm gonna scale the cube up like that and I'm gonna go ahead uh, to X axis I'm gonna go ahead and make it upward like that and then I'm gonna scale it and hit control a and apply the scale I'm gonna go ahead into its properties I'm gonna change it to bounds and I'm gonna go ahead to uh, okay so I'm gonna remove those uh, modifiers I just don't want to be bad guy okay I'm gonna remove okay don't mind okay so I'm gonna go ahead and add a modifier I'm gonna add a width proximity modifier I'm gonna okay so I'm gonna go ahead into object data I'm gonna go into edit mode click plus and click assign to assign a vertex group into vertex I'm gonna select the vertex group here and I'm gonna select the cube object in the target object I'm gonna set the proximity mode to geometry and in uh, wet paint, as you can see, we don't see anything. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set the lowest value. Okay, so it's not working. It's because we got to change some stuff. So first of all, I'm going to let me just make the highest to 58. As you can see, it's making some sort of change. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to set the lowest and the highest to 1. And I'm going to click these dots to animate to add keyframes into it. I'm going to go to frame number 200. And I'm going to set the lowest and highest to 100 and I'm going to go ahead and add keyframe also. I'm going to go into wet paint. If you play the uh, video, as you can see, now the wet paint is, uh, is animated. And I'm going to set it to face. Uh, let me just try it on age, but I'm going to set it to face because it's working. As you can see now, uh, gradually the wet paint is disappearing from the mesh and this is what we wanted. But we can play around with the speed. Uh, first of all, I'm going to move it up like that and I'm going to select the object. If I go into wet paint here and if I play it, as you can see, it's very fast going down. I don't want it to be like that. First of all, I'm going to set it to linear. And then what I'm going to do, if I play it, as you can see, it's doing it in a snap. And I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be slower. So I'm going to select this uh, keyframe. I'm going to move it some, somewhere right there. And I'm gonna move it like that. I'm gonna go and play it again and see how it looks like. So this time it's a bit slower. I think I'm gonna make it a bit smaller further because I don't wanna be like uh, having. Uh... Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna play it and see what we get here. Okay, so uh, I think uh, I think I'm gonna set the lowest, uh, the first frame of lowest to 16. I'm gonna click I again, so it's done at the first frame of the animation i think it's again not uh not a good one so i'm gonna set the highest and lowest to 30 and again add a keyframe by hitting i i'm gonna set it to something like uh, i think i don't know 20 and add keyframes again so I, i'm just trying to find a good value for this i have not planned it but i'm gonna i think that's fine i'm gonna go into camera view and uh, let's go into object mode I'm going to hit control S and I'm going to go ahead and add a physics It's going to be a cloth physics. I'm going to go ahead into cloth settings by clicking this and I'm going to expand the cloth. I'm going to set the preset to uh, leather maybe I think and then I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to turn on the pressure and I'm going to set the pressure to 1.9 I think. And our pin group, I'm going to select the vertex group and I'm going to click self collision. And now if you play the animation it's not going to play smoothly because it's not backed yet. 
but let's see what we get here i'm just playing it uh to see what i got here but i think i'm gonna bake it so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do i'm going to pose it and i'm gonna go ahead under cache i'm gonna click bake to bake the simulation you can wait for this i'm gonna pause the video and i will replay it okay so right now what we got here is something really a crap but i think you got the idea like my model was not an accurate model like uh the stuff for missing the stuff for not connected in the moment so that's why it doesn't look the same way as you expect it to be but you got the whole idea on how to fill up balloons with airs using blender and i think it's a good a good a good way to do it like you can see some of them are worn out teared out it's because they were not connected to one mesh so in order to fix the problem you can just go ahead into edit mode of this object and click uh, m uh, and you can just click by distance and it will merge the vortices by the distance and you will not have that problem again But for my case, I think that's fine I don't want to play around with different values because I don't want to make it longer So I think that's the first thing that I'm gonna do. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna delete the back and what I'm going to do I'm gonna set the vortex mass to something like 1.6 or something like that because I don't want to be uh, very very small sort of object it's like a big object so that's why it's not gonna be moving upward like a small balloon so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make the distance very lower so it got some realistic collision between objects or itself and I'm gonna set the quality to something like five because I do I just want to be a best one okay so I'm gonna go ahead and save the file and I'm gonna go ahead under cache I'm gonna click back or I can go ahead and make the vertex mass to something like 1.6 and I'm gonna click back and it will stop backing the simulation. I'm gonna pause and play it again. Okay, so what we got here, uh, if you go into render mode, uh, as you can see, we got something very black. I'm gonna change the render to cycles. And uh, if I go, I change the device to GPU compute. And under film, I'm gonna click transparent. So we got a transparent background. And under world setting, I got an SGRI, which is actually an overcast SGRI that is actually working for me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead into the directory where I have the HDRI because I think uh, I need the best one and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select this HDRI and let me just check it out and I think it's perfect. I'm gonna turn on the ground because it is a shadow catcher and it's casting shadows into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on denoise and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and select the source and head. I'm gonna go ahead into material and I'm gonna set up the surface to something like a yellowish color and I'm gonna set it to metallic one and the roughness is going to be a 0.23 which is going to be perfect for my for my work because uh, I just don't want to be uh, having a very complex shads and I think that's fine I can add a new shader into the plan object because I just want a perfect reflection from the ground because uh, if it's not perfect it's not gonna interact with the environment and I'm gonna go ahead and delete the cube uh, maybe I just I don't want to delete the cube. I just want to turn it off for reboot and render so it will not render out But I think I got the look like uh, it's not reflection, but it looks like reflection So I don't need to do all those passes shit. Uh, so what I'm gonna do uh, I think I think it's looking good. It's looking pretty good. I think So it's time for some render settings because if you don't render out the animation, it's not animation. It's just a 3d stuff Okay so first of all, I'm going to save the file. I'm going to go ahead and do compositing. You saw some crazy amount of nodes. We don't need them. Select them, hit X, and delete them. I'm going to delete this one also. Just left the composite in Weaver node here. And I'm going to go ahead and click Shift A. I'm going to go ahead and add an input, which is going to be a movie clip. I'm going to go ahead and add a scene, which is going to be a render layer scene. And I'm going to go ahead and add a color, which is going to be a, a mix. And I'm going to be an alpha over color node. I'm going to go ahead and connect the image to the top socket. And the render layer to the bottom socket. And I'm going to connect the image to the image and the image to the Weaver node. Okay, so you don't see anything because we don't we have not rendered anything out. So first of all, I'm going to set the samples to 15 for the sake of a sample. You can set it to 156 for the final one. I'm going to go ahead into output and set the file format to FFmpeg and the encoding going to be MPEG4. I'm going to select a location. You can set it to anything. You can save it to anywhere you want to be. You want to have it in the file explorer. But for my case, I'm going to set it to my tutorial folder because I don't want to miss that file because I have a bunch of stuff. I'm going to click accept. And now if I click uh, render, I'm going to save the file and I'm going to click render image. 
it will start rendering at the first time it's gonna take some time to start renderer but i'm gonna pause the video and i will restart it again so uh you don't have to wait okay so here we go we have rendered out the image and i think it's looking perfectly good i i think we can add more detail into it but i don't want to go into more details okay i think i'm gonna add some nodes i'm gonna go ahead and search for lens distortion here i'm gonna connect it to the weaver node i'm gonna set the the uh lens dispersion to 0.5 i think i think 0.02 which is perfect it's adding this glitch i can say a lens effect which is actually in real life uh, it's making it real and uh what i'm gonna do as you can see if you can if you have a look at these you got some rgb sort of things which is making it like a real lens and what i'm gonna do i'm gonna connect this one with composite also and you can now add anything like you can add um you can say you can add a color node you can add a saturation node if you don't want and if you're gonna if you want to make the contrast a bit higher you can also do it right away so in my case i'm gonna go ahead and add uh and adjust and i'm gonna add on here with saturation and value node which is actually going to make my colors a bit more contrasty and i'm gonna make it a bit saturated because i just don't want a very dull and a washed out color i just want to have a good looking color because i love colors so i'm gonna go ahead and make the saturation a bit higher and i think it's fine you can add more notes from here but i think i'm not gonna go to that much details because it's gonna be very boring to add those shitty amount of nodes there because this this changes everything you know so what i'm gonna do uh i think i'm gonna make it a bit a bit yellowish i think a bluish tune is good for epic scene but i think that's fine i think i think i can do it in after effect on premiere pro i'm gonna save the file go ahead and render the animation and have a good time thank you